the Toyota Lounge, a winner's lounge powered by your front range Toyota dealerships. Avs win over the Minnesota Wild 5-2, to two, or should I say Nathan McKinnon wins over the Minnesota Wild. Kind of one guy them tonight for the most part. He was awesome. I, I mean, we'll talk about Nathan McKinnon plenty in this show. Let's do the 60-second rundown before we go too crazy with it. Uh, Avs get on the board first. A nice little uh, power play action from Lekkanen. Good to see Nathan McKinnon with the setup, of course. But the Avs power play has been a good bit better of late, finding ways to be productive. Uh, they even end up going up 2 nothing in this game in the first period. Why? Because Nathan McKinnon is pretty good at hockey, it turns out. Uh, he's also pretty fast. Zach Bogosian might know a thing or two about oh, how fast oh, Nathan oh. McKinnon is. Not the only defenseman to get turned inside out by that guy tonight. Unfortunately, the Avs follow that up by doing the thing they do in the first period. They give up two goals to Minnesota, both of them on the penalty kill. The Avs PK continuing to struggle a little bit. That would be it for Minnesota scoring, though. The Avs would get the next go-ahead goal from Kale McCarr, who also played great tonight. And then Nathan McKinnon would score two more for a hat trick on the night. To win this game 5-2, the third period was academic and nothing happened. Eric, is this the bounce back you wanted? Do the Avs get credit for that? Or is this what it's supposed to look like for this team? Well, a little bit of both, right? Yeah. A little bit of both. It's supposed to look like that because you're a better team. Because the Minnesota Wild is a team tonight that really, I mean, mathematically now are eliminated, but before weren't. But they really had not much in the tank, even though they, you know, managed to have a 2-2 first period. But you could tell as soon as the Avs took over in the second period, it was it. You know, their, their, their soul was taken away. They had nothing left. But, yes, it's also the bounce back for the Avs that we were talking about in the pregame that we wanted to see. Coaches wanted to see. Players wanted to see themselves. They owe it to themselves to to right their ship a little bit. Like we said, it's not the end of the world, but you want to nip it in the butt. I mean, it was time for them to, to get back on track. Yeah. Tonight, what do they do? Well, we'll talk about it, but besides the PK giving up a couple, I mean, they tighten things up. There's, there's times in the second period, I think they gave up one shot the whole second period at five on five. Yeah. I think they didn't give up a shot for like a span of 10 minutes in the second period. So they played avalanche hockey, which was quick exits out of their own end sharpen your own end, check like Bednar always talks about, being above pucks, getting on top of pucks. Their four check was there, and then they got key goals from their superstars, and their two, you know, Makar, best D in the league, and McKinnon, best forward in the league, took over the game, and it was outstanding. I think it's a great point about the exits for me tonight. It's been, even through the stretch of games that the Avs were winning on that streak, at the end of the streak, it felt like the the crispness of the zone exits were start to breaking starting to break down a little bit they were still quick they were rapidly getting pucks up ice but you were seeing the passes struggle to connect at times guys throwing pucks to areas a little bit too often i tell you tonight it was a lot of tape to tape across that own blue line it was and it was a little subdued place too that you know like even on the mckinnon i don't remember which goal but Duran just throw the it little seems like back. a nothing burger yeah, play man. but it's a sick play you know, hockey IQ. Well, Max sharp. able to skate into That's it. That's right. Yeah. You know, and then the D has no chance. Yep. So I don't remember which one. Is that the Bogosian Middleton or, or Bogosian, Middleton? Yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> but, you know, it, it was fun to see. And they kept it simple in their own end. Yep. And when you keep it simple, stupid, right? <laughs> you get out of there. This is where you have success, which is from the neutral zone out because you're so fast. And you saw, I know it's name again. I mean, <laughs> God. But still, you're, 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 you got a few goals on the rush. You did. Um, you know. You got to go on the power play, the lucky one, to get you going. So I think it was a great night. I think their give a crap meter was a little higher, like we talked about in the yep. in the pregame. You had to because you can't. Bednar talked about it. You can't go to game seventy eight, then four games to go. All of a sudden, you're like, ah, just want to <laughs> wait till play. It doesn't work that way. You work too hard. Winnipeg won their game in overtime, uh, so you 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 had to win to keep pace and. Uh, you know, to, to really control your your game Saturday, right? And mm -hmm. then, you know, you beat them, and then you're probably in pretty good shape to clinch that home ice. So yep. I think it was a big win tonight. Great effort. Great bounce back. Good all around. Georgiev had to be good. He was good. Yep. And, you know, 
We'll talk about it, but maybe special teams. You know, the PK needs to tighten up a little bit again. Let's let's get into that. Let's sure. get hard to really pick too many negatives out of this game. No, but maybe more some things that the Avs might need to clean up. Yeah. Uh, yes, the penalty kill wasn't great. You can't give up two goals on your penalty kills, and then you know. It, yes, teams are supposed to co- score on the power play, but when you're running it, you've given up goals on five of your last six penalty kills. Not great, boss. It's it's a little bit like I say all the time. Like you go on a forget about special teams, but you go on a ten game winning streak, and then you get away with stuff, right? And then all of a sudden you get back to reality. You lose a the game, then you're like, oh, and then you feels like you can't even win a game anymore, right? <laughs> it's just the weirdest feeling. You feel invincible, then you feel like you're just a complete zero. It's a little bit like that with special teams, you know, power play the same way. All of a sudden you, you go 0 for 25, 0 for 30. You're like, oh, my God, it creeps in your head. On the PK, it's the same thing. They've been awesome. They were on an unbelievable run, unbelievable run since the trade deadline. Obviously, the new additions have been key to overcome the losses of guys like LLC and uh, to make sure that their PK is on point. But if you nitpick it, which... They do as a coaching staff. You know, I'm sure Pratt or Nolan Pratt and his uh, his crew kind of looked at things and like, all right, we got away with it. They hit a post or whatever it is, or we got a big save here, or and you you kind of go on a run or or good or hot or cold, right? It's a blackjack that I always talk about. So so I think they're they're just on a bad run right now. <laughs> it's just not been very good. Uh, do I have faith in them? Yes, absolutely, because I think the key elements are there. Uh, with the with the players that are playing on the on the PK, even though you're missing, you know, actually Miko is not even doesn't doesn't really kill, and then and you know, I mean Woody what does up? a little does bit, some yeah, killing, yeah. yeah. So you're missing maybe a an element right here. You also right took here. some penalties of some guys that are supposed to be penalty killing for and you. And on top of it, please don't take bad penalties like yeah. Wags. That was a bad penalty. You know what I mean? It's just uh, terrible. Yeah, terrible. Those, those no are bad. reason. Those for are bad it. penalties. Yeah. So. Again, when you get in a funk like that, like I said, you kill those bad ones, but when you're sorry, when you get in the funk, then you don't kill those ones. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like wins and losses. It comes and goes. You're hot, you're cold. PK's cold right now. And they will get back on track. Uh, that's you, you, you hit the nail on the head for me. Uh, yes. Was the PK bad? Sure. Am yeah. I worried about that? No. no. I have a bit more concern about the Avs' continued penchant for taking those questionable at best penalties yeah the wagner one i i don't know what to make of the mckinnon one man I, we don't know what he's yeah <laughs> like. but you know what the worst part is or the greatest part is is no one's gonna ask because no one remembers <laughs> so after a night like tonight yeah. everybody yeah. on twitter like right now is like mckinnon's the man you know but yeah. no Nobody one's gonna forget what you say about the guy's mom you know what i mean like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which was pro i mean to get a penalty you had to say you, something, you had to right? say something yeah. bad you know what i mean and again it it worked out fine they killed that one yeah. right you know <laughs> thank god um it didn't matter but we you know gotta learn i mean they know that but in the playoffs, like you keep your mouth shut, and it doesn't matter. And I know it's emotions, and God, it's human nature. You know, he's mad. He got hooked. He did get hooked, whatever it was, by Rossi or whoever. Yeah, he definitely did. But you got to take it. You know. Yep. But then again, we don't know. We're not out there, so it's hard to judge. Uh, did the guy provoke him? I don't know. It's just a weird that this has happened half a dozen times this season to the yeah. ass, this penalty <laughs> specifically. So, yeah, that's not his first one. Yeah. 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 Uh, but the, look, the flip side of this is sure. Penalty kill wasn't very good. Bad penalties. You know how many shots the Evs gave up at five on five tonight? Well, hold on. So was it twenty two total? So I'm yep. gonna go. I'm gonna go twelve. Eight. Oof. See, even worse. eight shots against at five on five. So you're talking about tighten the screws up, you know? <laughs> like they talked about yesterday. Then that's that's what you do when you tighten the screws up. Pretty good. Pretty good right there. And even with the penalty kills, only 22 shots total. Against. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. Come on, man. That's the type of defense. That's why we were so frustrated with these past couple of games, because we know the ads can go out and do this to teams. Yeah. Just give them absolutely nothing. <laughs> you you ever taken a, taken a Devon Taves, Eric, to the face? Oh, yeah. Oh, I've gotten a few. Like Big stitches or? Oh, this one. 
Right here. This one was over 100. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he went it underneath. And, but out. it was yeah, funny because yeah. like, he was on his face. Yeah. I was on my back. Like, not on my back, but sitting like this. And it was, like, gushing. So it was Yikes, like. Yikes, dude. <laughs> and it was so funny because it was in Toronto. And I'd been traded from Toronto. So I knew the, the, the doctor. And it was a plastic surgeon because they had to cut the nerve. And, like, sew the nerves underneath and then yeah. underneath. And Put that's it all know, back it's not together. so much. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was over 100, but it's not all on the outside. Sure, sure. But I came back and I remember like they put a visor on me and then I, I think my helmet was backwards and I'm <laughs> sitting on the bench like this. Like I missed like, I don't know, maybe that was halfway through the second. And I came back like 17 minutes to go in the third and I sat on the bench and and I'm like this and my face was out here. Like it was, I swear. And Barry Morrow's is our coach and I'm looking at him like, I'm good. I am good. And the play's going on down there. I'm looking left like that. Like, I have no idea. They never put me back out there. Thank God. I had no idea what I was doing. I'm sure they gave me a Diet Pepsi and a Tylenol. You, you said know? you're good to go. I'm good, I'm good to go. Here's your Diet Pepsi. Here's a Tylenol. And back then it was different, you know. But, yeah, so it's not fun. It's not fun. Is there any other sport where you can be gushing blood from your face and yeah. go back into the game? Uh, like? uh, it's great. I think it's awesome. <laughs> Freaking frack, he didn't miss much. He missed maybe he one did. shift. He was back yeah, fast, was back man. man. There was... I, I don't know exactly what. <laughs> it didn't look like he was really cut. It's probably his nose. Yeah, he might was, have broke his nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just started leaking. I think but... the faucet goes, you know. When you need repairs, it's just you're at the mercy of the doctors, right? So just crack you crack that thing back into place. When it's a no, you just snap it back. <laughs> you know, and put the two white things in there and, yeah, and then stop the bleeding. So well, he's an abs defenseman. He's got to do a good footy impression now with the with a broken yeah, nose. No, there's no one that's the Mount Rushmore footy. <laughs> he's number one. <laughs> Sorry, footy. Max is getting a little uh a little yeah, iffy Max these can days get a too. Bit too. Yeah. But yeah. Eric Messier is probably third, you know. <laughs> He had the big wang and schnoz. <laughs> mess. Sorry, mess. Something about wearing number 29. Will yeah. Get your nose messed up, I guess. Yeah. But it was a fun one for Colorado. It, it really was. It, not just, hey, it's a bounce back. Hey, you played well. A, a, a domination. Really, the, the third period was the first third period I felt like, all right, an easy one for the abs in a while. Here's what I say on this. When the abs play that way, which is what Benar preaches all the time and what Benar preached in his meeting to the team yesterday with the little video and everything is check, 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 right? Yep, you know, yep. and you hear it all the time. But when the abs check hard like they did tonight, when the abs get out of their zone quick, when the abs' best players are so dominant, yep. I don't care that it's the Minnesota Wild that's not in a playoff spot or, or the New York Rangers that are first overall. When the abs play this way, they're usually the better team of the two on the ice yep. because this is exactly what the blueprint of a Colorado Avalanche win looks like. Against a bad team, against a good team, again, a playoff-type atmosphere game, playoffs next week, or playing the 30th place team in the league. That blueprint makes them win Yep. because that's how they're built. And, and, and when... I mean, he wasn't going to be stopped tonight, McKinnon. That was like, oh. you know, I heard his interview after the game. He's like, oh, I woke up today. I felt great. Well, no shit. Like, <laughs> we could tell, buddy. <laughs> you look pretty good. You know, <laughs> you look pretty good. And, and, and Kale, first shift of the game, Kale yep, was just feeling vibing. it. You're like, yep. whoa, this is the guy we know. You know what I mean? So yep. it doesn't matter if it's a first place team or, or the Minnesota Wild that's, you know, not in playoff contention this year, obviously being eliminated tonight. But they. They were on. And yep. when those guys are on, boy, oh, boy. And that's why we say if your special teams can be sharp, which tonight the PK wasn't, but the PP scored a big goal, <laughs> yep. right? That's a big one. And then your goaltending was good. You know what I mean? You just can't have bad goaltending. Your goaltending was good. He did what he had to do, right? Exactly. He wasn't under siege, but he did what he had to do. If you're a goaltender and you give up less than three goals, you did your job. All good. No complaints. No issues. Uh, it, I will say. In the pregame, you talked about the Avs doing the little things right. Yeah. You go look at that first power play goal. Doesn't get a point on the play, but who's taking the eyes away? Who's in front of the net? Right. Val Machushkin. Big body, I think, Brock Faber. You know, he's been awesome this year. He's had a great butt. Hasn't you, played against many 6'4", 240 guys. You run into <laughs> freaking that weird beast that he is, you know what I mean, in front of the net. And you said it before the game. If you were listening to pregame, so I want Val to get back on track to be more of a menace that 
that he usually is. Obviously, he missed a little bit of time and taking him a couple of games. I thought tonight he was much better. He but much better. That play yeah. right there is an exact Val, the train, Kushkin, like, play. He just, Faber has to respect that he's there, goes there, goalie is caught. He just, it's like a magnet. Yep. And then all of a sudden, you know, the puck goes to Leckie, and Leckie yeah, puts it in the NBA cage. It's awesome. <laughs> but the job is, like you said, you don't get a point, which I don't believe he did, right? He did not. I no. think it was Kalen. So, but he is the reason why this play can happen. And that's yep. why I love hockey, and that's why sometimes points aren't everything. You just see the presence that he brings, and when he's not around like he was in the last few weeks or before coming back, he is, his presence on the power play is a difference maker. It is Zach Hyman, maybe. You know, they're probably the two best in the league. I right? had net front presence. Hyman is a little different. He's a little right? different. He's a but lot more of a pigeon can snuff yeah. out the rebounds a little but bit. But yeah. they're so, like, but they're so valuable to the unit. And then now, for sure, know, McDavid, Dreisaitl will get more. Same thing, Kale. Even though freaking Val's got a gazillion power play goals, you know, because he was so hot early in the season, they're just valuable pieces, you know, of their own respective units uh, on the power play. So, but he is a, I mean, Manny, you know, it, yeah. it's going to be so crucial in the playoffs. And if Val can make those plays like he did on that Lekin and goal, then the Abs will be in great shape. Yep. I, I, it doesn't always have to be the guy making the ridiculously nice play like a Drew and Drop pass or That's right. McKinnon being McKinnon. Sometimes it's the guy just doing the, the little bit. Right. That's what I was trying to say about Hyman and, and Val is they bring the grease, right, to, yep. The, yep. to the party. And that's right? exactly you know, right. Maybe Max yeah. the pepperoni and Drew's the cheese. <laughs> Can't and, have you know a pizza I mean? without grease. You need the grease. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a good greasy <laughs> pizza. So it's uh, <laughs> it's so important. So. To each their own, right? Yep. So, all right, chat. You did get us to over 100 likes. We appreciate that very much. We got our Dr. Dubs Vitamin W winner shots right here. So, thank you very much. I missed these. I'm glad I can do these again. <laughs> yeah, we don't have loser shots. I mean, if they get us to 100 likes on a loss, we could do loser shots, but I don't know about that. But. <laughs> it does. I, I'm going to lose that night if I do tequila. That's for sure. Uh, uh, on that note, make sure you are getting with the Toyota, the official vehicle of DNVR. We're super excited about this new sponsorship because Toyota is all over the front range. There's tons of different stores you can get with with them and tons of different cars, too. Whether you want uh, any of their truck lines, they have a number of different trucks you can get into, whether it's the... Uh, the Tundra or their new hybrid iForce Max, both great options. They also have 16 different hybrid or fully electric vehicles to choose from. The most of anyone that you can get with that. Toyota obviously has all sorts of iconic cars like the Toyota 4Runner. Uh, you can get with them today at any number of your front range Toyota stores. Uh, let, me, uh, let me pull them up here for you. Let you actually know where all of your Toyota local dealerships are, you can go to any of uh, AutoNation Toyota in Arapahoe and Centennial, Corwin Toyota in Boulder, Groove Toyota in Littleton, Mountain State Toyota in Denver, Stevenson Toyota East in Aurora, and Stevenson Toyota West in Lakewood. Get with Toyota, the official vehicle of the Colorado Avalanche and the official vehicle of DNVR. Once... You've driven down in your Toyota vehicle. Make sure you also get with Bet365. You can sign up with code DNVR365 today at Bet365 and bet $5 on any NHL game to get $150 in bonus bets. Get signed up now. Could have bet on a Mac hat trick tonight. You'd have won a lot of money if you gambled on that. Uh, you also would have taken the Avs to win. Get some money on that one. Any number of other bets you can get in on two multi-point nights for a guy like Kale McCarr, Arturi Lekin, and or Jonathan Druin. All would get the job done for you over at Bet365. Of course, if you bet on the Nuggets to win, you'd have done just fine. They are two. And let's face it, you should probably bet on the Rockies to lose most nights. But, <laughs> you know, you should know that. Susie won't <laughs> agree. <laughs> 
Whatever you're betting on, do it with Bet365. Download the app today with the QR code on screen. And when you do gamble, of course, make sure you're 21 or older, physically located in Colorado. And if you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER today. Second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. And let's not beat around the bush any longer. Let's get into our three stars of the game. Number three, Arturi Lekkanen. I wanted to put Jonathan Drew in here because I think he's played really well of late. But there's something to be said about the consistency of a guy like Arturi Lekkanen. Through the ups, through the downs, he's a guy who goes out there, does his job as a top six forward does some of the dirty work and regularly gets rewarded for it by being able to put some pucks into nets off of some, I don't want to talk down to him, but he gets to play with players that are better than him. Which we talked about it on the, the pregame, right? One of the keys was opportunity knocks, right? Yep. So obviously the moose not being there gives a chance maybe to uh, a, a guy like Lekkanen to jump up to go with Mac and, yep. and Drew has been so good with McKinnon. So, he took that opportunity. The first thing McKinnon said on the ice with Leo Hextall after the game was, my line mates were on today. They made little plays that are not so sexy but so invaluable to my success tonight. So he's talking about Druin's pass. He's talking about Lekkonen's plays everywhere all around the ice, right? Just being on the right place and creating room and hunting pucks like a dog. Um, Lecky is just a guy that you see come alive usually – even more so in the playoffs. And this is kind of like the playoffs right now. It's playoff hockey. You're down the stretch, and you can tell why he was such a valuable or a hot commodity a couple years of the trade deadline when the abs got on him. Um, he is a dream for a coach. You look down the bench, like I always say, it's BP, it's PK, it's five on five, it's a defensive assignment. This guy can do it all, a clutch goal. Um, Play with McKinnon, the best player in the league this year, or go play on the third line. Whatever it is that you need to do, he'll do. You know what I mean? Like, he might not be the most vocal guy, the most expressive guy, but his game sure is valuable to this team. Yeah. It's, uh, replace one fin with another fin with Miko out, I guess. There you go. <laughs> They're all Let the Miko same, talk. those fins. <laughs> Let Miko do the talking. There you go. He can be the talker. It, it's just so valuable to have a next man up ability like that in Colorado. It's what they lacked a lot of last year, yeah. if I'm honest. And I get the bottom of the Avs lineup in the fourth line isn't great right now because of some of the injuries. Yeah, You're dealing with a call-up of a Chris Wagner and a Yoel Kiviranta is playing. But compared to where they were at last year, you can move Lecky up. And you still have other pieces that you can reliably play because you went out and got a Casey Middle stat. And, and, and you might pinpoint at the end of the year when it's all said and done, you say, okay, out of the 82 games, which one of Nathan McKinnon's game was the best? Yeah. You might look at this one. It's got to be top five. And right? who's <laughs> missing? A 100-point yeah. guy in Miko, Miko Rantanen. Yeah. So it shows you how, how good Mac is, but it shows you how good – your third star tonight, Lekkanen, can be because he can make for the loss of a 100-point guy just by being himself, by doing the right thing. So fun to watch, fun to see, and again, be interesting to see down the stretch here when the playoff starts. He's going to be awesome. I hope so. Uh, number two, and this one, we all know who the number one star is, but I think for a having a good night, this one was more important than your number one. Kale McCarr, not just with a three-point night, but looked like himself. After a couple of tough ones, particularly on the defensive yeah. side, this is the Kale McCarr that Avs fans know and love. And I like from the first shift you noticed him. And it was smooth, Yep. and he was going. Is it perfect? Listen, when you play 30, 25 minutes, 30 minutes a night, and you have the puck on your stick the whole game, like, there will be instances in the game where you're like, oh, whoa, what's he doing? You know, no crap. He had the puck <laughs> on his stick the whole game. Now, if you compare that to a fourth liner, he probably had the puck for maybe three, maybe total two seconds. So Kale has the puck. So, so sometimes he'll make a mistake, but I don't care about the mistakes. What I care about is when he jumps up on the play, like he did right away at the start of the game, and he tries stuff because – He's one of the only guys in the world that can try stuff, 
not mess up because you never mess up when you're trying stuff. You're actually trying. And but if it doesn't go your way, he's one of the only guys that can just get back like it's like it's nothing. Yep. Like like I say all the time, with a brandy on the right and then a cigar on the left side. Like he can <laughs> It doesn't matter, and he'll be back. That's how good he is, and that's how flawless he is of a skater. So when he tries stuff, when he goes, when he's got the the swag, you know what I mean? When he has the swag, man, oh, man. Again, he must have the swag a lot. I mean, he's got his career high in points tonight. So, again, off year for Kale McCarr. You know, <laughs> great. That's awesome. He's been phenomenal, but tonight it, was vintage Kale McCarr. Yeah, didn't feel very off tonight. I'll put it that way. No. <laughs> for the record, McCarr on the ice for a grand total of two shots against. <laughs> That's why he was unreal. <laughs> Not bad, huh? No. Uh, <laughs> shots. You didn't say goals or no. scoring chances. Shots. No one on the Amps was on the ice at five on five for a goal against. So, well, there you go, yeah. not bad, not bad on that one. Uh, did they? He might have given up zero scoring chances too. <laughs> no, no, I gave up one. Tough night, buddy. Bum. <laughs> uh, and then number one, Nathan McKinnon. Obviously, an incredible night. Four points, hat trick. But it's not just. Oh my God, was he the best player on the ice? It's. Oh, by the way. He has 51 goals on the season now, his first season with 50-plus goals. Oh, by the way, he's up to 137 points on the season. <laughs> Just two back of Kucherov now. And two back of Peter Stastny, yep, right? The, the all-time franchise, franchise record. record. Which you should get when you do the math. Yeah, I mean, three games left, two, two points to tie, three points to That's take. That's like it. a slow pace for him, right? I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Odds, I mean. <laughs> Pretty good odds. Pretty good odds. Sorry, Peter. Put it to you that way. It's... You said it earlier, right? Everyone knows Nathan McKinnon is great. Everyone knows Nathan McKinnon is capable of stuff like this. But when you get to watch him on a night like tonight where nobody can say anything, right? Everybody on the ice just has to shake their head and go, yeah, that dude's just better. Felt bad for... Like we talked about Middleton and Bogosian. Yeah. Like, jo- buddy, that's illegal. <laughs> you should, I mean, honestly, you should have put in jail. They should be waiting <laughs> for him. That's, you, you know, on the highway, you go 25 miles and over, like, you know, you, you get arrested. Max doing pot- 120 down. <laughs> buddy, that is not right. That is just not right. And even as a coach, you look at your D, like, mm, I, 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 you tap him on the shoulder. You, that's all good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to say? Like, you yap at him and say, there's nothing you can say. Your other option is you have to go out there and defend that guy. So you say, good job, buddy. <laughs> buddy, it's like a Chevy Chevette against a Ferrari. Who's going to win the race? There's no chance. I don't care how good the Chevette is. It's not going. Like, the, the Ferrari will go. Um, but he was unbelievable. <clears throat> and this is what I... This is where I believe he's a freak. You got to remember, like, and I know they had to bear down tonight, but I think it was the right call yesterday, right? They're, they're at home. They just had a meeting. It was an optional. Didn't really burn a lot of energy on the ice, which is so stupid this time of year. So it was the right call. Guys were ready tonight. But this is the difference tonight, McKinnon. Those bursts of speed that you see, like, from your seat at, at Ball Arena or through the screen if you're watching on TV. It happens so many times tonight. And if you go back to the Edmonton game. It wasn't happening. It just wasn't there. Yeah. Right? You know, so there was, and that's why I say sometimes, like, as an athlete, you have no juice, you know? Yep. I'm not saying he played bad in Edmonton. I'm saying, like, you didn't see it. No, you went to bed at 4 a.m. I mean, it's just, it's just tough. But tonight, you know, but then again, it was three and four. And then this is the back end of another three and four. Remember I said yesterday, I was like, I don't know. They might have no legs tomorrow. I, there's some guys that had no legs, you know, but this guy, he had, <laughs> he had legs. all the legs. Whoa. Yeah. Like he's, you know, I mean, this is, that's why I say he's a freak of nature, because if you would have had no legs again tonight, I would have been the first one here to say, yeah, three and four. He plays a lot. Got to him. You know what I mean? Like it's yep. been a rough 10 days, uh, you know, a rough seven days. But no, like there was nothing stopping him tonight. It could have been the fourth game in four nights. He would have been flying. So <laughs> he is a freak of nature. Well deserved built different, first man. star. I'm telling built, you. Built different. I, yeah. He better win the heart. 
I've been saying it all year, but he better win the heart. No brainer. It's an easy one for me. He also doesn't get empty net points for free. <laughs> so it is what it is. AJ wanted them to pull the goal. I know. I saved know. their season, but it didn't happen. <laughs> get must, an extra cookie there. It would have been nice. Must be nice. Must be nice to get goalie pulls if you're Kucherov. But that's okay. Kucherov can have the heart, Ross. I don't care about that one. Just give Mac the heart. Uh, it, those are your three stars. I, I know I didn't put them in here, but I did want to talk about Jonathan Drew in a little bit. And, and three, three assists tonight obviously was awesome next to Nathan McKinnon, which, you know, on a night like tonight, pretty easy to look good next to that guy maybe. But personally, we're getting to the point where it's almost, I don't care, I, I do something irrational for Jonathan Druin uh, to keep him in this lineup. Beyond this season. Rudo was just here tonight having his meal and watching the game. And he said, listen, I'll give him $10 million a year. I don't care. No, I'm kidding. He didn't say that. But I think like a lot of fans, I think like, I'll say it, Jared Bednar, uh, you look at this and you're like, God, what do we do to keep this guy? Things will fall into place. Things will work themselves out. If, if they're going to work themselves out, and or, or not, I think you'll see that once playoffs are over. But what a fit he's been. Again, I'll say it again. I'll tip my hand to him. I was one of the guys that was skeptical. I didn't see it. After 10 games, I was like, Meh, told you so. You know what I mean? Told you so. I was wrong. I was dead wrong. I think it's remarkable what he's done. I think, again, it's just we know he's got the IQ. We know he, he can play with a top-end guy. Like McKinnon, we know he's got the filthy plays, uh, but me right now, it's 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 again. I'll use that word again. It's the swag that he has, which he hasn't had for a few years. Yep. It's the hunger that he has in his game to check, like Bednar always says. Mm-hmm. He works hard. He's first on pox. He's first to back check. Hasn't been in his game the last few years. He hasn't, and I think he has a smile on his face and he looks happy. And I think that is invaluable. That's why I say this is a unique case. This is a guy that's made money, like the $6 million a year, whatever it was. Um, and I'm not saying you can't get it twice. I'm saying he, he's hit it before. Of course, now, it's just a matter of what makes you happy and, and how many steaks can you eat. You know what I mean? So, so there's, there's a little combo there of what <laughs> is going to have to, you know, him and, and Alan Walsh that always looks for the best interest uh, of his clients, of course, uh, and, and you got to give credit to Alan Walsh as well this summer to, to say that's a good fit, right, for you. And I'm sure again we weren't there in the conversations. I'm assuming, you know, you're gonna go and take a huge pay cut, a huge pay cut from what you were making, but the fit will be there. Forget about the Halifax homies, and we all know it's there. But you have to make it happen, and that's why I say hats off. He's made it happen, and he again. He's got to be outstanding next week. I have no doubt in my mind. Now, five months ago, I would have told you, mm, I don't think you'll see him in the playoffs. No, I'm like, well, I think he's an example for the rest of the team. And that's kind of my point is, when this season's all said and done, do you not sit down with that guy and go, look, look at how your season started, and look what happened after you figured it out here. Yeah. Do you really want to go somewhere else and have to figure it all out again? And maybe it doesn't fit you as well as we do. Maybe you don't have the opportunities that you've had here. I, and I'm sure, like I said, dude's got 56 points, a career high this year. I'm sure Walshie and and him will sit and you know, and his significant other. And I know he's happy here with his with his family, his kid, and so you know it's important. I think it's important nowadays we see it more and more. I think it's important to feel good in your skin. Um, I'm not being stupid here, but but he looks good. You know yeah. what I mean? Like he I agree. looks good. Like he his face his facial expressions look good. He's he's a confident man. He, I saw him talk between periods, like the interview on ESPN, today, and he was he is confident, and, and I think that you know. It's nice to see because it's been missing for a few years. It's been a tough few years. This has been a perfect fit. In the end, we'll see what happens. But I agree with you. I would do everything in my power to 
try to make it fit to what makes mm. sense for both sides. He might have scored his way out of the price range, but he, he might. I hope not. I, I hope they make it work. And uh, stop scoring. You know what? Do <laughs> shit. I don't know about. Th- I, I don't know about that. Don't do good the next three games, and then don't worry about it. <laughs> Keep it under sixty. Uh, let's hear from Jonathan Druin himself as Megan interviewed him after the game. <laughs> you are <laughs> obviously you hit your career high. Yeah. Um, how does that feel? This is obviously your best season, and I mean your first year here. Yeah, it feels good. Um, like I said earlier this morning, it's been a tough couple of years um, in Montreal, so it's nice to, to feel good about my game and actually get career high in points. Um, not stuff I really look at, but I'm just proud of how I'm playing and uh, how the team's playing. How fun has it been yeah, it's doing been it with Nate? Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's cool. Um, obviously, tonight was a cool night for him to get 50 and assists on. It's always it's always cool, and uh, you know, the building is rocking, and it was a cool night. We asked you a lot about Nathan McKinnon, but what does Kale McCarr meant to your season? Yeah, same thing. Um, you know, when you're on a late, when you're on a line with Nate, you're going to be on with Taser and Kale. It makes your makes everything easier. Um, they're so smooth skating defensemen. They make great passes and great shots. And um, you know, any, any line will tell you if you have Kale McCarr playing on D, you're, you're going to have success. You're going to do a lot of good things. So. You've, had, you've seen him. I mean, he's had some amazing games this yeah. year. You've seen him a lot before. Like tonight, kind of felt like one of those nights back in Halifax. Like I mean, he was just. Yeah. Oh my God. yeah, we were laughing. Uh, <laughs> actually, after his first goal, I thought we were playing in Halifax, to be honest. I've seen, I've seen those breakout goals where he just blows by the D and the D doesn't even send a chance. So um, he had his legs tonight for sure, and uh, he made it count. He said that he never thought that he'd score 50. Is that something you saw that he would get there eventually? Yeah. Um, you know, when you're in the 40s with a couple of games, you always have a chance. And uh, Obviously, scoring a high trick will definitely help getting 50. But um, yeah, like the way he shoots the puck, the way he gets his looks and chances, um, every year he probably gets 50 if he wants. After the last couple of games, how big was a game like this, yeah. a convincing oh, yeah. victory? Yeah, it was. Um, I think five or five scoring chances, there weren't many. Um, maybe three or two or something like that. So I thought we played it well, well-rounded game defensively. Um, obviously, they, they had two power play goals, but other than that, I don't think we, like, we didn't, they didn't really create much. We were kind of holding the game. Aside from the talent that has surrounded you this year, why do you think you've thrived so much this season? Yeah, um, I think, you know, it goes to the leaders and the staff here. I think everyone has worked so hard. and. Um, you know, I knew I knew coming in here when Nate when I signed that it's gonna put your work boots on in the gym and everything and uh, it's pays pays dividends for everyone that puts their their work boots on and go to work and um, it's not only Nate I think there's a, a lot of guys a lot of handful of guys that um, take their game very seriously and they look at the details and their work ethic and uh, it pays dividends. And Coach Bednar had said that he was very proud of you when you were nearing this milestone. How much has he influenced yeah. and, and been a big part of that? Yeah, we obviously I didn't start I didn't start the season very well, a couple of healthy scratch, but um, he was in my corner, he's trying to help me. We're watching video, and um, you know, he's a hell of a coach and um, very calm guy to just kind of work on the detail. You know, you know, you, you know what you to expect from him. He knows what to expect from you, and uh, it's been a very easy transition. Nate gets that unsportsmanlike penalty. Yeah. Do you kind of know come, him coming out of the box, he's going to be fired up? And yeah, he, is. he gets fired up uh, a little too much sometimes with the refs. I try to call him down, but um, you know, if, if, you, if you know Nate, you got to say the right thing at the right moment or he's going to go off on you. So, um, yeah, I think he's a very fiery guy. He's in the game. And, um, coming out of that box for sure, he's going to go fire him. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Jonathan Druin, two-way game. Part of the reason the Avs made this game chill in the third period. When it's time to chill, make sure you're rooting for a Coors Light. Or, you know, you could get a Coors Banquet, too. That's what I got right here. Uh, It's the good stuff. The beer literally made to chill. Make sure you're grabbing a Coors when it's party time, when the abs are on. Go for it. Go over to CoorsLight.com slash DNVR, and you don't even have to go get it. You'll get it delivered right to your front door with Instacart, so you barely even have to get up off the couch. Uh, Look, solid stuff. I I don't know what to tell... How do you explain to people not from Colorado that Coors is just a staple here? Like, it's just always my entire life. It's just like, oh, yeah, you need a beer, Coors. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they do, but. Where for, I'm from, it's Molson. Yeah, for us, it's Coors. No. Nope. So get with it. Get with Coors Light. Of course, please make sure you party responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And then I, uh, I had a little bit of work done on my house today. 
I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, there were birds trying to roost in my vents. I have a fan vent from my kitchen. That's happened to my parents yeah, so had to get that sorted out. If you have any issues going on with the exterior of your home, Lavello Construction is the way to go get it fixed. Lavello will help you with everything from roofs, siding, uh, paneling, vents, you name it. Lavello has your back. Uh, make sure to get with them, especially after all this weather we've been having. Could be, uh, could be some crazy stuff going on on the outside. You can get with them and get a quote within one minute right now. It's painless and quick to get a hold of them. You can scan that QR code on screen or call 303-578-8551 to get that quote today. Uh, obviously, it's April, so you can expect some more storms coming here in Colorado, too. What well, it would be nice tomorrow if Lavello is a... Well, they have a day off. The next day <laughs> um, is that practice with the abs to work on the PK. There you, you know, go. The fix <laughs> got the PK. You know. Got to tighten that thing up a little bit. We'll Make let, sure there's no leaks. We'll let Pratt or no. No, <laughs> Pratt. <laughs> Make sure you get with them. Uh, roofing, gutters, siding, paint for your home. They've got it all covered. Here in the front range, get with Lavelle at 303-578-8551. Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. Hearing from Druin, awesome, love the guy, but uh, let's hear from the dude who has 137 points on this season, too. I know you're typically not one for uh, individual accolades, but uh, just hitting the 50-goal plateau, what does that mean to you? Yeah, it, it feels good. Um, you know, I never thought in my life I'd score 50. Uh, honestly, I never really thought I would. Um, yeah, it feels good, obviously. A lot of amazing plays from everybody all season. A lot of empty nets. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, you know, hard work from the whole lineup. I think it's a team achievement, honestly. Uh, you can't, it's a, it's a, uh, a team sport, obviously, and it's tough to get there. Uh, you can't do it alone. Is it a little extra special for you to you know get the pass from childhood friend Jonathan Drew to, to set you up for 50? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, uh, I'm sure it's something to look back on. Um, you know, it was an awesome drop pass, too. It was a pretty play by him. And, you know, he's been so amazing all season. So it's uh, it's obviously fun to uh, connect with him. I've only played him a handful of times this season, but three or four loud MVP chants. What does that mean to you? Uh, yeah, I appreciate the support, obviously. Uh, you know, I want to I wanna win. I, I, you know, you have a whatever season, and then you, you lose. It still doesn't feel very good. Uh, it's about it's about winning, and, and obviously, I appreciate the support from the fans. On that 50th goal with the pass from Drew, are you calling for that, or is just that just his instincts kicking in? To the pitch? Uh, I think both. I think he's looking for me, and I'm I'm letting him letting him know I'm there because um, it is kind of a weird weird uh, re-entry. So, yeah, I'll uh, definitely call for it though. How special was it for you to hit that milestone the same night that he hit his career highs in assists and points as well? That's great. I didn't know that. Uh, that's awesome. Um, you know, he's he's proved a lot of people wrong. I think, um, you know, and uh, just really happy for him. all the work he's put in this season. He's, he gets better every week. It seems like right now, and uh, you know, it's it's fun to watch him work every day. After the last couple of games, how nice was it for this team to bounce back the way you did? Yeah, it was really important. It was a uh, tough efforts. You know, it's uh, you know it was a it's a tough schedule right now. We're we're, we're uh, we were emotionally in, in the Dallas game, just mentally making dumb mistakes, and uh, we cleaned that up tonight. We were really solid defensively and got plenty of uh, chances the other way. Cool. Thanks so much, Nate. Thanks, Nate. Thanks, Nate. Congratulations. Congrats. It's, it's nice, I would say, to have an easy one, and I know I've said that a couple of times tonight, but I kind of just want to run through uh, what the Avs have looked like since they've come off of that winning streak. Uh, starting with tonight, obviously, a 5-2 win where they make it look pretty easy. But then, obviously, you have the loss to Edmonton, which is not great. Or rather, the loss to Dallas, which is not great. And then the blowout loss to Edmonton. So, two tough games there. You have the win against Minnesota, which the earlier win. But that game was 3-2 going into the third period. You didn't make your life super easy. You have the tough loss to Columbus. You have the win against Nashville, but same kind of thing third period where you have to kind of gut it out and do what you need to do to make sure you win a hockey game. And then you have the, uh, the other tough loss to Montreal. It's nice to see the Evs get back to, you know, I don't want to say the way they were playing 
during the win streak because there's a lot of factors that are going yep. into that. But nice to see the Avs get back to playing quality hockey. Here's their blueprint. McKinnon just said it, right? It's mm -hmm. about winning. Uh, it's about checking. It's about being opportunistic. It's about controlling the game. And they did all those things today, you yep. know? Like, yeah, we can, like we said, we can nitpick the PK. You can, you know, obviously, it's, it's rare you get a complete game. Um, sneezing again, just like a couple days ago. <laughs> what is it? Pickle. 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 Yeah, it works. Um, yeah, but it's, uh, it was fun to see his focus. You know what I mean? Like McKinnon's focus. It's exactly what, like you said, this team needed. They needed to focus on it, pay attention to details. Um, and when you do that, they're dangerous. And, and even playing like that tonight, they could have won the game one nothing. Yep. And, and, and it's okay because you're controlling the game. You're never really... Yep. Rudo goes to the bathroom 38 times a game. So Only Rudo 38? That's on the low 38. side, buddy. Man. He could have could leave and not be worried. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. well, there's times, you know, you're like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? You don't want to miss anything because you're like, oh, God, something bad's going to happen. So when they're in control of the game, they're, they're, they're a tough team to beat. Yep. It, it, it's what you want to see. Yeah. You, very well put. It's obviously winning on the scoreboard is the objective of hockey, and it's great that they did that. Yeah. But it's the flow of the game. It's the style of the right. game where you see, okay, the Abs are just the better team out there. Right but now. They're controlling it, and the other team's chasing it. Forget about the score. Yep. Like the game itself. So they're built that way. You said it. McKinnon's built different. That, that team's built different. Some ways. In some ways. In some nights, perhaps. It's far from over. For the Avs, though, Winnipeg also won tonight. So the Avs do maintain a two-point lead. Winnipeg does have a game in hand, but the Avs do play Winnipeg directly. Coming up next. So if they want home ice, it's a must-win game, yeah? They do. And it comes at a perfect time because they've been home a couple of days now. Had a day off. Now you'll probably have a day off tomorrow. you got Thursday, Friday. I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe they're going to give them another day off. I'm sure he will. They'll have one practice, one, yeah, there, you know, where one way or the other. You tweak things. You you talk about things. Where yesterday you talked about things, you didn't really get on the ice because it would have been useless. This one you'll do a little bit of both. Get yourself ready for Saturday, Sunday, two afternoon games. Yep. Again, huge game against Winnipeg. Playoff type game against Winnipeg. Most likely your opponent in the first round. Uh, you want to show that you want home ice. You want to show who's Who's boss, right? You know what I mean? And and I think you're going to probably see Miko back. Um, I'm not sure about the extent of Wood and things like that. But then again, I don't believe they've lost anybody tonight. Um, but you're going to see a well-rested physically and mentally team, which will be huge at home, be ready, and they'll be well-prepared for it. I hope you're right. I hope it looks a lot like this. This looked like a team that was ready to play playoff hockey. Yes. I'll put it to you that way. So getting guys back, not getting guys back, I think that's not really on the Avs' mind. They're just focused on playing the best they can. And it actually looked like it tonight. So who knows? Three days off at this time of year, Eric, good thing or a bad thing? Oh, it's a great. I, after what they've just been through the last good thing, four games, a great thing. You know, it's a great thing. How about another three days after the back-to-back? -back? That is a little strange, right? You know what I mean? I'm being honest. Because now it's might be just a might be a completely meaningless game for, for either team. You, yeah. you don't know. Yeah. Um, I want to say meaningless in the standings. Yeah. And then how do you approach it? And then it's three. And then I, who knows? And when does it start? Apparently it starts that Saturday. Some teams are starting Saturday. Yep. That is what I've heard as well. Edmonton. So you gonna what are you gonna do? You gonna bring McDavid here on Thursday night? I don't. I don't care about the scoring title or <laughs> if he's right there. At some point, who cares? Stay home. But yep. again, they might be fighting for something too at the time. Again, we're assuming, which we shouldn't do. But there's a lot of scenarios where that game could mean nothing. <laughs> it very well could for both teams. For to both be teams, honest. you know. So we'll see. maybe I, there's rumblings that. <laughs> AJ might make his first appearance on the point for the Colorado Avalanche on a one game <laughs> the really, trial. Really desperate at that point. Yes. <laughs> AJ patrolling the point on the power play. Well, 
If you're trying to get to one of those Avs games, make sure you're doing it through Game Time. Over 15 million people use Game Time to get their tickets, and they guarantee you the best prices on tickets out there. Sign up with code DNVR. You get $20 off your first purchase where you can go in and get discounted tickets by last minute sales and use their section selector to save on average 18 percent you can get all sorts of other deals doesn't even have to be an abs game either any sporting event in the country you can also get to concerts and theaters and all sorts of stuff when it comes to game time so go check them out today use that dnvr code to get in there and if you find tickets cheaper anywhere else game time will reimburse you 110 percent of the ticket price jump on it download the game time app link in the description right now once you've got your tickets and you're all set up there, make sure you got your game time snacks. Good to go with Circle K. Uh, Eric Cedar definitely went off tonight. Looking great, Kale McCarr. Not yes. too shabby for a, for a three points on your Inner Circle Rewards. Whoop, whoop. You can get in on Inner Circle Rewards with Circle K right now with that QR code on screen to download the app or go to circlek.com slash inner circle today. Your first five Phillips after joining it gets you 25 cents off a gallon. You also get a bunch of other amazing snack deals. Excuse me, including up to five free Polar Pops when you go in to Circle K with your Inner Circle Rewards. Jump in with it. Get on it. Become part of the inner circle today with Circle K. Uh, all right. Let's get ourselves to some super chats. $2 from Rudraksha, who says, uh, McKinnon, 25 miles per hour, greater than Kucheri Pikarov. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it. $5 from James, who says, uh, I can't do a Hulk Hogan voice. I'm not, I'm not any good at it. <laughs> Abomania was running wild, brother. Better than the last. I don't know. I don't do a good Hulk. Hulk Hogan? Yeah. Uh, if you guys want a voice, ask Eric to do his Mike Tyson voice. That's oh, the good God. one. Uh, $10 from the Incredible Drew, who says, I think we just saw a preview of Playoff Nate. Couldn't have gone better for him on a national game. F that empty net merchant in Tampa. My $50 bet at plus 900 for Mac is about to pay off. Yeah. That's good money right there. That's good money. Pretty sure. sure, Drew. Not producer oh, Drew, no, different sorry. Drew. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, $5 from the Walrus himself. Hope Drew is willing to piss off the NHLPA with a cheap contract, or McFarland looks to move money out to keep this dude around. Tarps off. Hashtag Miss AJ. He'll be back for our next pod. No, I guess he won't be back. We're potting tomorrow, but he'll be back for the pod after that. Um. Uh, $5 from Wilson, who says, Nathan, glad we got the win, McKinnon. Avs are all right, boys. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. What are you supposed to say? Love it. <laughs> <laughs> they are all right. Never been any doubts about Nathan McKinnon's single-minded focus about winning. That's for sure. What a season. You're <laughs> witnessing, I mean, greatness. You are. I mean, that's just. Truly. I mean, you can count on one hand, probably, games that. You're like, e yeah, he didn't have much time. You know what I mean? Which he's human, you know? And I always say he's not human, but <laughs> in those games he were. You know what I mean? So you're talking about 95% of the year that you're absolutely <laughs> Pretty nuts. on a yeah. tear. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, it was a fun one. Now I have to go home and pour water on my head. So Yes, wake up. <laughs> That's just part of the deal with hat tricks, man. It's the way it goes. Uh I'm going to relish this one. Any final thoughts for you, Eric? No, I think it was a get back on track message yesterday by the staff. Yeah. I think it was a response uh, worth of an A, a plus, yeah. you know, by the team tonight, by, you know, from goaltending to, to the forwards, to the Ds, to the superstars. Um, again, forget about what the opponent was. Sure, you know, uh, but everybody's got pride. It's the NHL. Anybody can beat anybody on any given night, but... They certainly didn't give those guys a reason to hang around. They took away their will by the second period early, and they never looked back. And and then it didn't really look like a match anymore because they were so because they're so far better yep. than the opposition like the Minnesota Wild tonight. Eight shots on goal against at five on five. That's ridiculous. It's That's just fine. a silly number. And by the way, five of them came in the first period. There you go. So second and third period, a grand total of three five-on-five five shots on goal. Yeah. I, you can't play any better than that. Yeah. Not in reality. So. <laughs> Maybe they're tired from, you know, 
as a group taking Duhame's tires off his car <laughs> and all that stuff. You know, There's a lot of work, a lot of work off the ice. <laughs> well, for that, Minnesota is now eliminated from the playoffs. Yeah. So sucks to suck, Minnie. Uh, we are out of here for the night. We appreciate all y'all hanging out with us. We will be back for an off-day pod tomorrow, so be sure to tune in to that one. And then we're taking a couple of days off on Thursday, Friday, because someone's got to go watch the uh, Frozen Four. Go be you, and I didn't say D. I said B. <laughs> I didn't say D. I said B. Be you. Speaking of be you, our diehard piece, scouting Macklin Celebrini. Eric did some of that in person the other day. Go check that out. See what uh, the expected first overall pick has to offer. The NHL coming up. We are out of here. Thank you for watching. We will talk to you tomorrow. We all city like the mayor. 